You're watching the news summary on Kazakh TV, review of the major news of the week from Kazakhstan. I'm Jana Sagindikova. Good evening. Within the framework of the G Global project, Kazakhstan will open an international center to combat infectious diseases in Guinea. A corresponding statement was released by President of the Region Club of Scientists, Murad Karim Sakov, during a spring session of the International Monetary Fund at the World Bank in Washington. In recent years, the world has been experiencing economic instability, financial crisis, natural disasters, and deadly infections. Three years ago, Kazakhstan has introduced a mega project. G Global has a source of unique ideas and solutions to global issues. Today it has become a major platform for international dialogue between scientists, politicians and businessmen. During the regular session in Washington, head of Kazakh delegation Murat Karim Sakov met with Minister of International Cooperation of Guinea, Kotu Psano. Kazakhs have agreed with the government of Guinea to work jointly in the fight against diseases. For instance, Kazakhstan took part in the fight against Ebola. Now the G-Global Secretariat plans to establish an international center for infectious diseases control in Guinea. This idea will be discussed by the government of Guinea. We know that West African countries are experiencing outbreaks of malaria and smallpox and other infectious diseases. We are very happy to, to get to know this G Global. Uh, we are very delighted to know that they have been helping Guinea in, in its fight against uh, Ebola. G Global initiatives already have the support of the Islamic Development Bank, Alufer Rio Tinto, and other international financial institutions. The project has attracted great confidence. It was viable at the Astana Economic Forum, where its communicative internet platform was presented. At that time, the online forum brought together millions of participants. All the assistance which Kazakhstan is giving to our member uh, countries, we do appreciate really your initiative in giving assistance. I think that in the future we will develop these relations through this important organization, which we call G Global. And I'm telling you, I came from Guinea, where now everyone is talking about G Global and Kazakhstan. G Global, G Global, and Kazakhstan. The region economic integration is strengthening its positions. More than 40 countries are willing to sign a free trade agreement with the EAU. Vietnam may become the first country to sign. A corresponding statement was made at the forum Eurasian Economic Perspective in St. Petersburg with the participation of the representatives of the Kazakh parliament. Large-scale economic projects are beginning to be implemented with such economic giants like China and India. Cooperation with them has a principal advantage. After all, we export raw material along with high-tech products and create joint ventures based on the Eurasian technologies. Speaking of the prospects of the EU in general, the format is accommodating to many countries. Experts propose to take measures to enhance the trade turnover. We could become a bridge between East and West, an integral and important component of the global economy by taking advantage of our geographical position, developing transport and logistics infrastructure. A state program to support mortgage borrowers launched in Kazakhstan. The program will review and refinance loans for socially vulnerable segments of the population and citizens who have received mortgages in foreign currency and debtors with delinquent accounts. The National Bank will allocate 130 billion tenge for this project. The funds will be placed in the second-tier banks for 20 years at 2.99% interest rate per annum. In turn, banks will refinance troubled loans at 3% per annum, also increasing the maturity of up to 20 years. According to the basic parameters of the program, mortgage loans issued in the period from 2004 to 2009 are subject to refinance where only housing of a borrower and the spouse will be used as collateral in order to ease the financial pressure on the borrowers. The remaining amount will be refinanced and the debt on the remuneration, commissions and penalties on refinance loan will be excused by banks. The principal debt shall not exceed 36.5 million tenge, an equivalent to $200,000 for borrowers who have the only housing with 
no more than 125 square meters. If it is a family with many children or socially vulnerable people, then this rule on the limit of the square meters doesn't apply. We assume that all loans in foreign currency will be refinanced. Problematic mortgages that are overdue over 90 days will be refinanced, and this program is designed for all socially vulnerable segments of the population. The country will introduce a legislative provision that guarantees fair social financing. How will the pensions, scholarships and social benefits be calculated? Who is eligible for the free medicine and price reductions? What books should be provided to each student and what payments shall foster parents get? These and other standards are elaborated in the draft law on the minimum social standards and safeguards. Members of the Majlis have adopted the law in the second reading. Members of Parliament have been controlling what the budget money is spent on and studied international experience. As a result, they have developed a minimum service package guaranteed by the state which should provide an acceptable standard of living of every citizen. Moreover, the law will work on all levels from national to local budgets. The minimum social standard governs the correspondence between the budget and well-being and entitles everyone to get what is defined by the state. Any terms higher than the minimum social standards can be provided by budget funding. But nobody has the right to give less than what was provided. Anyone will be responsible for not providing the minimum social standards. Ninety talented children from low-income families in Taldekurgan received the opportunity to study for free in country's leading universities. The Almaty Regional Authorities signed a memorandum on cooperation with the provosts of nine national universities. Presenting certificates for scholarships, Regional Governor Amandik Patalov stressed that the main purpose of this agreement is support for gifted children and helping them to obtain a higher education. On the same day, university provosts and students planted 100 trees in the city park, an alley of knowledge. For the first time in our country, the governor of the Almaty region holds such a campaign, a campaign which provides scholarships to receive education in all universities of our country, leading universities. This campaign, I hope, will be supported by governors of other regions. We teach and we will support these future students and most importantly, these students then, after graduation, will return to their regions in their villages to raise up their villages to a higher level. The Secretary of State Kulchara Abdikalikova and representatives of French educational organizations came to an agreement to conduct a regular inter-university forum in Paris this year. The sites intend to continue cooperation in the sphere of education. It is also planned to extend the list of majors at the Sorbonne Kazakhstan Institute. It is worth noting that education is a priority course of cooperation for both countries. Currently about 500 students from Kazakhstan study in France and this number is to be increased in the coming years. The Secretary of State expressed her wishes regarding the improvement of higher education quality and we confirmed our readiness for this sort of cooperation. We have certain ideas and I think that perhaps we will be able to examine educational projects in detail in the Kazakh French Educational Forum in the next meeting. The first Kai Power drilling rig was presented in Atural. It was launched at the enterprise that produces the drill bits. The project started six years ago. My colleagues tried to learn the specifics, cost effectiveness and see if there is a demand for these products. Production of drilling rigs in Kazakhstan is significant. So far oil companies acquired such equipment in Russia, China or Europe. Logistical issues made the already high cost installation equipment incredibly expensive and Average oil companies cannot afford such a luxury and rent them. Such drilling complex is made from scratch and has all power units and electronics. This is the first one in Kazakhstan. It boasts with top capacity 2.5 thousand of horsepower, 650 tons on payload and its drilling depth is 7,000 meters. The first customer was the Kazakh oil company Kazmunai Gas Drilling. This drilling machine has passed testing and now it will be transported to the hydrocarbons production spot. The quality is good, but the most important thing is that now we have the opportunity to buy domestic drilling machines. It is much cheaper than overseas and the power of the unit is high. I think this is not our last purchase. 
I think the increase of our market for us is inevitable. Also, the increase of our production as we are a generally young company and just starting. We plan to make the next drilling rig with a lifting capacity of 750 tons and for this case we plan to modernize its assembly and welding production, in other words, to robotize it more. Drill bits that have no competition in Kazakhstan are also produced here. The Russian markets are being actively explored while contacts with Turkmenistan have been established and contacting African countries in the long term are in plans. As for drilling facilities, no one doubts the volumes of orders. Moreover, in three years it is planned to increase the production to five drilling complexes per year. Saldi Kurgan and Velros that won grants in the competition of innovative ideas have presented advanced development models of their projects such as an air purifier and an exercise bag that generates electricity. The air purifier with a four air filtration system eliminates unpleasant odors and harmful gases. It can be used in manufacturing plants and in public places. Another project is the outdoor exercise bike that generates electricity for charging mobile devices and various gadgets. A built-in battery power is enough to charge 20 phones without interruption. The inventors believe that their invention will have multiple benefits to our citizens. Мы хотим договориться с администрацией города и разместить вот эти... We want to make a deal with the city administration and install these exercise bikes and air purifiers in the city. These devices will ensure clean air. We want to place bikes in parks so that people will be able to charge phones and different gadgets. We hope that in the future there will be more orders, maybe even a mass production. Больше заказов и может даже серийное производство. Заново объявляем ежегодный конкурс. Annual competition of innovative ideas and projects is open again with a fund totaling five million. However, the size of grants may increase depending on the quality of the projects, the scope of projects, and the coverage. Я думаю, соизмеримо будет увеличить увеличиваться размеры грантов. The preparation for the Ust-Kamenogorsk Expo competition has been launched in the East Kazakhstan region. The competition on innovative projects of green technologies will be held for the second time in the region. However, this year it became a regional contest. The applications have been received from inventors from Karaganda, Southern and Northern Kazakhstan. Nazarbayev intellectual school student Ilyas Bikbaev will present his invention in the special nomination for school children Junior Expo. He designed the tool of original source of heat and electricity on the base of outdated decommissioned aircraft engines. Here one will also see windmills, smart home systems, innovative energy saving lightings, etc. The best projects will receive a quote to the most anticipated event Expo 2017, organizers say. We allocated 200,000 tenge. We do not hand the cash, but invest into layout production. If a person has an idea, he or she can make a model for this prize fund and visualize it. The most important thing is to motivate people engaged in science and to make not only grown-ups, but school children take part in the contest. Kazakhstan may expand the list of countries that require visa to travel, as reported by Deputy Chairwoman of the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs, Gulnar Kurmanbaeva. The relevant legislation is expected by this summer. It will allow citizens of 26 countries to enter Kazakhstan without a visa, which is very important in the run-up to the International Exhibition Expo 2017. Today, the issue of visa regime is being reviewed very seriously. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Internal Affairs, the National Security Committee and the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs developed and supported a project jointly with the Minister of Investment and Development to expand the list of 10 countries that do not require a visa for traveling to Kazakhstan to 26. And we very much hope that this will help us during the Expo. At the moment, preparation for the Expo 2017 is in full swing. According to Kurman Baeva, a competition of tour packages for guests visiting the exhibition from bordering Astana regions was held in the country. Also, the deputy chairwoman has underlined that 1,500 companies are working on welcoming guests in Kazakhstan today, including different hotels, sanatoriums and resorts. Now a big competition for holiday packages is held for visiting guests not only for the capital but also the nearby interesting places in the Karaganda and Akmala regions and along the road to Pavlodar. All possible tourist facilities today are interested to take part in it and it's in the government's plan of work. The World War II co-evils 
the son of a World War II veteran, Bayash Lyasov, was named Genis, which means victory from Kazakh. He was born in 1945 on the Victory Day, May 9th. The infantryman Bayash Lyasov fought in the battles near Leningrad, today St. Petersburg. He was wounded twice and never liked to talk about the war. He brought up seven children. Genis became the founder of the Lyasov's doctor's legacy, which is almost 115 years old. The family story is often talked about, especially on the threshold of the Victory Day. The head of the doctor's family, Janis Ilyasov, was born on the Victory Day 70 years ago. On this day, his father, a member of the battles near Leningrad, Bayash Ilyasov, returned from the war after the second injury. All friends came to visit, but his wife presented him the most wonderful gift. She gave birth to their son. <laughs> Everybody wanted to give me a good name. Someone proposed to do a draw, write a name on paper. My older brother drew and pulled Janis. The name coincided with the news of the victory in World War II. The son of a veteran, the victorious Janis, listened to his father's advice, became a doctor and founded the family dynasty. He used to head one of the clinics in Kokshetau and now it's headed by his son. 500 city residents use the services of the clinic each day. Janis Bayashevich sometimes comes to visit his son and to evaluate his work. Yeah. I was raised in a specific medical family. Our general experience is 115 years of our medical dynasty. My wife is also a doctor. I was brought up by my grandparents. My grandfather was a war veteran. In 1941, he went to war. He got shrapnel wounds in the right hand. To be honest, in all the years that I remember my grandfather was alive, he almost never talked about the war. He served in the infantry on the Leningrad front. Janice Ilyasov's wife is also a doctor. Soon the couple will celebrate their golden anniversary. My husband and I were born the same year as the World War II victory. He was born on May 9, 1945, and I was born on May 29, 1945. Every year we come at the monument and lay flowers. We pay tribute to World War II veterans. This is our family tradition. The National Chamber of Entrepreneurs at Amakan has announced the launch of a social project to express gratitude to World War II veterans ahead of the 17th anniversary of victory. Every veteran can appeal to the Chamber of Entrepreneurs with a request to help solve their issues. All questions will be recorded and sent to the business community. The entrepreneurs have already been helping the veterans in the regions. In October, for example, heads of 77 different companies have renovated apartments for World War II veterans at their own expense. In the North Kazakhstan region, a well-known businessman, Vladimir Levin, has manufactured furniture for 12 veterans of Kiziljar at his own factory. In the Jambul region, Tursin Rakhmetaldaev has built a monument to the heroes of World War II in the Salibaya village. Healthcare companies have also joined the large scale campaign. Veterans and home front workers can get free medical care in various clinics throughout Kazakhstan. Here, the elderly will be provided with a full range of services examination, complete diagnosis, medical procedures, and treatment. I was a radio operator and I graduated from Moscow School of Radio Operators and Scouts in Lubertsy. I kept the scouts connected and was preparing for an attack. After the Kursk battle, a bridgehead was being prepared. They kept bombing so hard that I lost my hearing. The doors of our health centers will be opened to receive veterans from the 1st of May to the 30th of June. Preventive medical checkups will be carried out and also memorable gifts will be awarded by our company. We have long thought what gifts to make and decided to give out electronics Figmo manometers as they are convenient to measure blood pressure. Games in the Kazakh and Russian languages help children develop thinking, attention, memory and most importantly, in a playful way to get acquainted with the traditions of the country, its nature and its folktales heroes. More than 20 such educational games were released by the Kazakh publishing company Balapan. Our film crew visited a kindergarten in Almaty where these colorful Kazakh products are successfully used. 
The world through the eyes of children, the way they see it. Their knowledge of the world begins at the earliest age, and these colorful educational board games will help them get educated. Games are different from books. They are more fun for children. They tell us about the Nauris holiday. Some games, ITs are arranged, the way people visit each other. Everything children need to know is provided. The publishing company Balapan produced more than 20 such games. They are in three languages, Kazakh, Russian and English. Some are dedicated to the species of wild and domestic animals, birds and others to the designs of yurts. Children study ornaments with interest and get acquainted with the Kazakh fairy tales heroes. We consult with the methodologists, young parents and kindergarten teachers to come up with new ideas. Even parents who had just bought the games email us and make suggestions, tell us about their wishes. Games have become popular among the Russian-speaking population. Many parents who have been using these games began to learn Kazakh with their children. Holiday of Kobis and Turkish music in the heart of Paris. The UNESCO headquarters hosted a concert dedicated to the heritage of Korkita town. Musicians from five countries have performed ancient curies and modern music, which was greatly influenced by folk art. Musicians are holding the oldest string instrument, Kobis, which was created in the steppe of the Kizalarda region, has been acquiring different forms by different peoples for many centuries. However, Kazakhs have managed to preserve the closest form to the original. Korkitata is a unifying personality not only for the Turkic world but for the humanity because he invented Kobiz. This may serve as a proof for the theory that the music of violin has originated first on the territory of Kazakhstan. Each coup was either written by Korkit or tells a story about him or performed in his honor. This year, the world marks the 200th anniversary of the first edition of the book of Korkit Ata, a collection of stories with various content, but each of them features the main character, Korkit Ata. This book is a written monument of the Turkic peoples. Today's event will become a historic event tomorrow, because the 200th anniversary is celebrated by all Turkic-speaking countries. Musicians from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan are taking part in this event. The ceremony promotes our national art and the connection between Turkic worlds with each other at the same time. The bridge of friendship is, of course, necessary and Korkit Ata becomes a link in today's evening. Within an hour, the audience enjoyed the music of the steppe and at the same time, being in the heart of Paris could feel the atmosphere in which nomads once lived. The evening was concluded with a joint performance of several orchestras where the major parties have been performed by Kobiz and the main star of the evening, the world violinist Ayman Musakhajaeva. Kazakhs have reached the North Pole. The participants of the ski expedition in less than a week reached their destination to install the national flag and the flag of the Kazakhstan People's Assembly. Our field crew also felt the atmosphere of the land of permafrost and met with the North Pole explorers on the island of Spitsbergen. Tired but happy, the North Pole conquerors got off the ladder. They are the Kazakh citizens Bakhit Kerimjanov, Sergei Bodrov and Konstantin Arlov. They have been on the expedition to the destination for six long days, no matter the cold and gusty winds that have been freezing to the bone. Sergei Bodrov immediately noticed a change in the temperature. Oh, Oh, what a great weather. A week of silent snow deserts and ice flows, sleepless nights in a tent with the sound of cracking ice. All that is gone now. Bakit Karimjanov, Sergei Bodrov and Konstantin Arlov have skied for over 130 kilometers or 25 kilometers a day. The members of the expedition say that it was a record speed compared with the participants from other countries. The ice kept cracking all around them, but the Kazakhs honorably continued their way, which will be soon written in the history books. Thanks to the Kazakh Geographic Society, to our friends, they were close. We helped each other. There were difficulties on the way. We avoided falls and we made it. The organizer of the ski tour was the Kazakh Geographic Society. According to the head of the organization, Kazakh scientists and travelers have even more ambitious plans in the future. 
In 2016, in December, we will organize an expedition to the four poles to mark the 25th anniversary of independence, the pole of inaccessibility, the north magnetic pole, the pole of cold, and the south pole. Our ultimate dream is, of course, to open a station. The two flags of Kazakhstan and People's Assembly of Kazakhstan are floating in the far north of the world, symbolizing the indomitable spirit and great ambition of the young republic. These were the main news for the past week on Kazakh TV. You're watching the news summary from Kazakhstan, my home country. I'm Jana Sagandikova. I'll see you soon. Have a good and productive week. Goodbye.